When choosing your professional wrestling finishing move, I happen to think there are four things you gotta know, and there are four design elements you must consider as well. And we're gonna talk about all eight of them next. I'm Mike Quackenbush. This is Till We Make It. Throughout my career, I have been very fortunate to work in front of the cameras as a professional wrestler, referee, commentator, and ring announcer. And I've worked behind the scenes too as a promoter, booker, agent, coach, and consultant. Today, let's talk about your pro wrestling finishing move and how to go about choosing it and a little groundwork. When considering the artistry of professional wrestling, I break down all the various elements into one of three categories. First of all, the structural, meaning the underlying architecture, the narrative backbone of what we make. The performative elements, things like how we sell, how we orient for cameras, and how we engage our theatrical tools. And then there's the mechanical, and that's what we're talking about today. The physical mechanics of wrestling, the moves, reversals, counters, transitions. We're talking finishing moves. A well-chosen finishing move can become synonymous with the wrestler who employs it. And it can become not just an added feature of their matches, but a valued feature. We come to anticipate the Rainmaker when we watch an Okada match. We come to anticipate the F5 when we watch a Lesnar match. We anticipate La Mystica when we watch a Mystico match. Now over time, the finishing move that you choose for yourself will be something loaded with both equity and anticipation. And we're gonna circle back around to those concepts at the end of today's video. But from the outset, I think there are four things you need to know as you are going about the process of choosing this move for yourself. And even if some of these sound very obvious, I wanna talk about them very clearly and plainly so there are no misconceptions. So the first thing I want you to know when going about choosing your pro wrestling finishing move is that it need not be the most complicated move that you know. In fact, going the opposite direction is perfectly acceptable. And when you think about it, some of the most celebrated and well-known finishing moves in all of professional wrestling are actually quite simple. The leg drop is a fairly simple move. The super kick is a fairly simple move. The attitude adjustment is a fairly simple move. These are not complicated, nor does your finishing move need to be. And cut from roughly that same cloth is the second thing I want you to know about choosing your pro wrestling finishing move. And that is, it need not be a high risk move. The degree of risk involved in your finishing move in no way, shape, or form will impact how well it is received, or the amount of anticipation you can build up to its execution when you are wrestling. Take, for example, the people's elbow. This is a low-risk move, and yet the fact that it has that low-risk factor has in no way impeded its ability to electrify audiences and build to climactic moments. The third thing I think you need to know when choosing your pro wrestling finishing move is that you don't have to invent a brand new wrestling maneuver for it to be an effective finisher. Did Randy Orton invent the RKO? No, that move existed for years before he even began training. Did Tanahashi invent the high fly flow frog splash? No, that move existed for years before he began training. It is less about the originality of the move and far more about its execution and the way that you build to that finisher. The last thing I want you to know is that when you choose your pro wrestling finishing move, you don't have to be concerned with rebranding that move with a proprietary name. Do you know what I mean? Let's say that I chose the Boston Crab as my finishing move. Do I need to rebrand the Boston Crab with the proprietary name, the Quacken Crab? No, I don't think so. The Boston Crab is a well-established and long-tenured move. Everyone knows it as the Boston Crab. There is no benefit to assigning it a proprietary name. So if you feel like 
you want to use the power slam as your finishing move, but you can't figure out how to rebrand that with something that sounds proprietary, I don't think you need to worry about it. Just do the power slam and call it the power slam. Okay, so those are some things I think you need to know. Now, let's talk about some design elements to be considered when choosing your pro wrestling finishing move. There are four that I want to talk about. And before we dive into them, I'd like to ask you to just take a moment and subscribe down below. And if you would, while you're down there, enable notifications, please. Okay, up first. When you choose your pro wrestling finishing move, I think it has to be universal. And let me explain that a little bit. You want to choose a finisher that can be used on everyone on the roster of your home promotion. So run it through this little test to make sure it is universal. Is this move something that could be done with the heaviest person on the roster, the lightest, the tallest, the shortest? The most flexible, the least flexible, the most experienced, and the least experienced. And if it passes that test, then I think you've chosen a finisher that is universal. Up second, maybe a little obvious, when selecting your pro wrestling finishing move, you gotta choose something that you do excellently. So you'll recall earlier on I said it doesn't have to be something that's very complicated and it doesn't have to be something which is high risk and that's true. What it does need to be is something that you can execute excellently. Do you bring a consistency and a precision to its execution? And if it also happens to be spectacular, that's great. But what's most important here is that it's a move you do excellently. Now this next one is really important, so keep watching. A third design element we got to talk about relating to your finishing move is its adaptability. You don't want to choose a move that can only be achieved when conditions are exactly right or it results from a very rigid or idiosyncratic setup because that will only end up painting you into a creative corner. You want to make sure that the move you choose for yourself has a degree of adaptability. Can it be done in the center of the ring? Can it be done on the run off of the ropes? What are different ways you can arrive at that move? You're going to want to test something as important as your finishing move out for its adaptability. And last but certainly not least, is the move protected at your home promotion? And I'm going to define that term a little bit. So let's say you choose as your finishing move the Tiger Driver. But what if 10 other people at your home promotion also do the Tiger Driver and none of them use it as their finisher, or maybe one of them does and the other nine use it at various other points throughout their matches. Well then, that move, the Tiger Driver, at least within the realm of your home promotion, is not protected at all. There is nothing unique about it within that environment. I know that Tiger Driver example was fairly overt, so let me give you a totally different example to illustrate what I mean about protecting a move within the context of a single wrestling organization, okay? So back in the autumn of 1992, the WWF champion at the time was Bret the Hitman Hart. And that November, he was entertaining a challenge to his belt from Virgil. At that time, Virgil's finishing move was the side Russian leg sweep. And I'm of the opinion this was a poor choice for a finishing move. Because the side Russian leg sweep was also a regular part of Bret Hart's repertoire at the time. The TV audience had seen that move dozens, if not hundreds of times, and in no cases had it ever won a match for Bret Hart. The champion of the company, the one being promoted as the best wrestler the company has to offer, couldn't win matches with the side Russian leg sweep. So what credibility is there in that as a finishing maneuver for a challenger? In my opinion, none. The side Russian leg sweep in that example was not protected. If you choose a finishing move, which you do excellently, it's universal, adaptable, and protected within the context of your home promotion, I think you're off to a great start. Now, build equity and anticipation into that move. And if you need help doing that, click on this video right now so that you can keep on learning. 
and follow the link down below to my Patreon, where I publish educational multimedia for fellow professional wrestlers. Everything from podcasts to essays to book excerpts to exclusive material you won't find anywhere else. We'd love for you to join our community.